Hi, I'm David Willens, and uh, welcome to Nyaf Chat, Samuel Jamier. Yo. And we have a special guest this week, Brian Young. Hello. Uh, Brian is an actor, a producer. You've worn a lot of hats. You've done uh, all kinds of, you're a busy guy. Try to stay busy. First yeah. of all, I love that Nyaf. I never heard it called that. So big shout out to you guys. I, I know was, we're about to jump into some serious topics, but Nyaf is one of my favorite festivals of all time. Nice. I'm not just saying that. You guys bring the best of the best from the Far East to, to New York every year, and I've been a supporter and a, a regular goer for I don't know how long, but several years now, so, so props to you guys. And that uh, is always awesome to hear. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks, Brian. Do um, you want to talk a little bit briefly about some of your current pro I know you have a really cool project going on right now. Yeah, Snakehead. Yeah, Snakehead. <laughs> uh, sure. Snakehead, which... Some people behind the cameras here especially know about <laughs> a thing or two. Uh, we're currently in production, actually. Uh -huh. uh, we're technically not wrapped. It, we wrapped our New York portion, um, but we still have a little bit to go. And Snakehead, what can I say? It's, uh, it's based on the book about the actual... Well, it, it no? actually... Uh, <laughs> okay. It's not based on the book. Uh, uh -huh. There is a, a book called Snakehead, yeah. which... Um, you know, is out there and has been out there for some time. But this is a, a, an original story based on the world of snakeheads and the underground smuggling, you know, universe that exists in New York City, Chinatown. So there's a lot of material out there, um, you know, essays, articles that are still being written to this day, uh, which is an interesting um, point of view about snakeheads and, and this sort of the syndicate of them that exists. And so... Do you want to just be fundamental and explain what, for the people who don't know, sure. most people will know, but what the snakehead is and yeah. who, it's, what's her name, Sister Fung? I forget her name. Well, Sister C is, Sister is C. our character's name, yeah. Okay. Um, snakeheads are, basically they're what coyotes are to people crossing from Mexico into the American border or into the American territory. So people coming out of China into the West, uh, this was a, born out of the... I don't know the exact year, but the period of the 80s into the 90s is where a lot of um, a lot of Chinese kind of migrated right. out of, uh, in particular, the Fujian province. Sure. And they came here with the help of human smugglers, bringing them over by any means necessary. Right. Um, often boats, you know, to to into New York and other other sort of big international cities like uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, sure. Canada as well, and so. Um, you know, people will pay them a fee. They get like up to upwards of forty thousand dollars to get them to U.S. shores safely, mm. so that they go and you know get to live the American dream of working in a restaurant, a laundromat, you know, a brothel or what have you to Yikes. to to earn right. actually you know believe it or not a, a better paycheck doing that than they were back at home in 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 their hometown and from what i gather it's almost always an ardu incredibly arduous frightening journey that doesn't always end well absolutely it it's not a, it's not like you get on a boat and you go from point a to b and you're in new york they would often uh, you know 100 to whatever amount of people would get into a boat together get smuggled and they would it was it was a very circuitous route they'd go from fujian to hong kong and then they'd have to catch another boat, and then another boat. Like so, by the time they got to U.S., they might have stopped in like four or five countries, and it might have taken up to a year, because it's not like you just catch the connecting train. You right. know, from your I gotta take the four uptown and get on the R. This <laughs> this is like we have to wait till the next ship with a captain that's willing to let us get on that boat. Yeah. You know, so there's this whole like intricate. You know, uh, like I said, syndicate and orchestration of, of moving people uh, with willing partners who are willing to look the other way. They obviously got to cut these people that were like, you know, the, the ship captains. Um, and, and then by the time, like, they, again, got to North America, then it was still a journey just to, like, they would come in through Mexico or Canada and then try to figure out how to get across the border. And so, yeah, it could, well, obviously a lot of people got sick and died or... What's interesting is a lot of people even just kind of gave up and they said, you know what, F it, I'm just going to stay here wherever I am because I don't know when the next ship is coming. And so to this day, people, people wonder why there's like random Chinese people in Guatemala, in right. Africa, in like South America, wherever it is. And 
a lot of them are because they literally couldn't get to America. And they just said, I'm just going to set up shop here and open up a restaurant here in Mexico. And so, you know, it's, it's really interesting how, how that's that, a crazy that diaspora out. effect. Yeah. Um, that sounds like, I wanted to see the movie. It sounds like it's going to be intense. Yeah, it's, uh, it is intense. It's a crime drama, um, set in the underbelly of New York City, Chinatown. Um, it's, you know, we've been at it for about 30, 30 production days so far. Oh, okay. But we started filming in December uh, of this past year. Um, we just got through, uh, the longest blitz in February, which was, uh, because we started in December and January, and we just had a few production days in either of those months. And then February, we shot straight throughout into March. And then now we've got a little bit more. And uh, I mean, so far, it looks really good. Um, we're getting great performances from Suya Chang, who's our sister C. Mm -hmm. uh, Sung Kang is, is playing okay. uh, a role, um, a, a very instrumental role, and he's killing it. Um, and Jade Wu is playing kind of our senior snakehead who takes the younger snake head under her wing. And Jade is an absolute, uh, you know, tour de force performance. Um, and we've got some really good supporting characters too, like people we found who, to be honest, didn't have a lot of experience or, you know, right. not a lot of credits, but just we found, they just came out of the woodworks. And because we're, we are an ultra low budget film and we're yeah. just doing what we can with whatever resources that are available. Snake, snakeheads definitely have been represented in Hollywood films before, uh, in obviously in more like sort of minor side characters when they have sort of a Chinatown aspect to their story. I think uh, there was a Joseph Gordon-Levitt movie where he's a bicycle. Yeah, premium, premium rush. Oh, rush. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the Jason Statham movie. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. With right. a plot that's, yeah. I mean, the snakehead plot is kind of central to the, the, the yeah. entire And entire I think thing. it speaks to, you know, the fact that, like I said, it's this universe that there's so many stories that come out of the world of snakeheads. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously there's like very one, there's one very sort of, I don't know if iconic's the word, but like, you know, the, the snakehead of all snakeheads, that, that idea, you know, alluding to what you're talking about that most people know. But there are so many snakeheads and um, aspects to the story that we're telling and finding, creating, fictionalizing. And, you know, people, I don't think they even realize, like, snakehead, there are powerful snakeheads that live in, in Europe, that are in Europe, that are in South America. And, again, they're all over the world. And so it's such an interesting... Um, interesting universe really that I think there's I think we're just scratching at the surface actually in terms of our film you know but certainly other people have thought of and would you think of, of these uh, uh, representations in Hollywood films of uh, uh, these snake heads this human uh, traffic smugglers well I think you know Hollywood obviously like anytime they have to they whether it's a TV episode or it's, yeah. it's a film where they're like, oh, we're going to enter into the mysterious like world of Chinatown. <laughs> the right, right. Mysterious. Yeah. right. This, this, this brings <laughs> us back to um, the, the whole, what right. do you call it, Orientalism, Orientalism, like we were talking about the Iron Fist show. Yeah. Fetishizing yeah. Asian culture Fetishizing and so forth. The, right, oh, yes. right. That's what Hollywood... Absolutely. I mean, every, every Law & Order, every CSI season, there's one episode that they go into Chinatown and they deal with the triads and snakeheads and, you know, all the stereotypical sort of like things that, that everyone just associates, right? Everyone who is creating those episodes and those stories and who usually creates those are not people that look like me you know, <laughs> or, or you and, and, and or don't understand what, you know, the three-dimensionality of, of what these people sure. people's lives are really about. And so in our film, you know, I think what's obviously going to set us apart is that this snakehead is, the whole story is about her, right, and her journey. And so the other movies and, and shows that have done, have t t touched on it, they're very sort of like superficial, right? And we've humanized, obviously, and our character is a very polarizing one at that. It's not like... You know, she's doing things that are illegal, but at the same time, she's helping people. And so, so there's a lot of aspects to that story. And but her motivations more are morally questionable as far as helping people, no? Yeah, I mean, 
definitely, you definitely. I think that's what, but yeah. that's what also makes the best characters. Sure, right? your anti no, heroes, serious right? drama. You, you talk about like the most interesting characters now on on TV or just in general, like or what actors get to play are those who are always walking that line of what's right or wrong. Right, right. So, um, yeah. So we're 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 pumped. Um, you know, Suya Chang again. She's she's a relatively new comer to the scene, but she's an Austrian-born uh, Taiwanese okay. uh, woman who has been in New York for several years now, and, and she's carrying this movie, and, you know, she, she's really doing a tremendous job, so we're excited to, you know, we're excited to get this out in due time and, and show people, you know, the story, uh, the talents, and, you know, I think it's one of those things where we're obviously very small budgeted thing but we're 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 making the most with what we have and we're hoping to you know it's it's no secret like everyone every movie every indie filmmaker is they start with something small and it's all driven by passion and you have right. to hope to win over the audiences and and make your star and you know and so you know Sung Kang is doing us a huge favor and solid by being in it um but our film has gone through a lot of ups and downs over the years of trying to get it off the ground, and there's been a lot of interesting conversations. And uh -huh. you know, in terms of like, in terms of the budget levels and the casting and the pre-sales and distribution and all these things, sure. like we finally arrived to a point where we said we just have to make this with what we have on our own terms, and so we we uh, reset and we started shooting in December with, you know what. You know, you always look back in this 2020, but it, it makes sense now looking, looking at it and how it all came together. So, how did you come to the project? Well, so uh, Evan, Evan Leong and I are long time now co collaborators. Evan is the writer director of this film, mm -hmm. um, and he and I made uh, Lynn Sanity together. The, oh, right on. The documentary about uh, Jeremy Lin, the NBA basketball player. So, we uh, we collaborated on that, and then after that run which we had a you know a good a good run with we made a, another uh another documentary in Taiwan and we've worked on a couple other things where you know which just he's he's my my friend now and so right. so we share ideas and so this idea actually was his for for a long time even before uh, I I ever met him so right. he's been developing it for about 10 years yikes and uh Ten years, he moved from L.A. to New York to, to do this, like, six years ago, and... Well, he came specifically here to do this yeah, project. Yeah, he moved right out on. here. He was a California guy, and he moved out to New York, and he wanted to, you know, live in Lower East Side Chinatown, study the characters, right. build his network, Just talk to people... And do his homework, you know, and so right. the artist, you got to Immer like, immerse himself in the actual absolutely. location. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he did, he did that. And, um, you know, he was, I remember at the time he was like, he had a day job at MTV and, and, um, and, and then as a sort of a side project, we, we started this uh, little web series idea about this, you know, relatively unknown Harvard basketball player right. named Jeremy Lin. And, and then that took a life of its own once, yeah. you know, Lynn Sanity broke out and uh, and then Snakehead got shelved uh, for a good three years because that because documentary, that took, yeah. it just got, it, it, you know, it's once you, once it gets into a festival and it gets to the, the point that it got, everyone wants to screen it. Evan's traveling around the world. That's a good year of like, you know, handling and servicing the film and then by the time the dust settles two years have gone by and so like yeah. it's just like there was it was a it was a great experience obviously working on that film yeah sure but it sidetracked evan from from this but it all made sense again looking back because that has given him a boost in terms of his you know his career and credibility i mean the whole lynn sandy phenomenon is really cool and really fascinating and it's interesting that you because that um really highlighted Asian Americans in, in, you know, here in popular culture and Asian American voices that are not usually heard. And it's interesting that you guys are working together and bringing that more with your, you know, your new project. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, no, we, we have to, uh, you know, take control of our own destiny, you know, telling our own stories because right. no one else is going to do that. Mm -hmm.